Hello, good morning and welcome to Business News on Sunrise. Coming up this morning, Ghana Employers Association laments the high cost of living as it urges governments to roll out a robust policy to reduce inflation. We urge government to work through the monetary and fiscal authorities to craft rapid innovative policies that will help bring down the inflation rate. Meanwhile, rate of price increases slows for the first time in five months, easing pressure on the central bank for policy rate hikes. Both food and non-food inflation relative to what we saw last month um, are slowing down. Plus, government is expected to roll out over 3.51 billion cities maturities in coming Treasury bills auction. We'll bring you the details of our headlines and more news shortly. Thank you for staying with us. We'll start off with the Ghana Employers Association, which has called on governments to roll out a robust policy to reduce inflation. President of the association, Daniel Echampong, was reacting to high inflation rates in the country. The Monetary Policy Committee at its 113th uh, meeting held from 19th to 21st July 2023 increased the policy rate by 50 basis points to 30% from the then 29.5%. This has yet again caused an elevation in the borrowing costs, posing a major challenge to employers and businesses in the country. We urge government to work through the monetary and fiscal authorities to craft rapid innovative policies that will help bring down the inflation rate or quick translation to low lending rates in the financial market to help boost businesses. That was Daniel Champong, president of Ghana Employers Association. Meanwhile, annual inflation rates fell in August to a 10-month low at 40.1% from 43.1% in July. This means between August 2022 and August 2023, rate of price increases has dipped by 3% amidst the city stability. Foods such as cereal and cereal products continue to drive inflation. Prices of food such as vegetables, tubers, plantains, fish and seafood continue to drive inflation even as general price levels moderate. The rate of price increase has slowed for the first time in five months. Both food and non-food inflation relative to what we saw last month um, are slowing down. But if you look at it more critically, you see that the, the slowdown from a food perspective is much steeper than the slowdown in non-food, specifically we saw on a year-on-year -year basis between July and August 2023, food inflation slowed down by 3.1 percentage points relative to 2.9 percentage points from the perspective of um, non-food inflation. Imported inflation for August was 36.2 percent. Since August 2022, inflation for imported items have consistently been higher than inflation for locally produced items. And in the month of August 2023, we recorded inflation for locally produced items 42.4% and inflation for imported items 36.2%. As inflation slows, some analysts are of the view this will influence the central bank to maintain policy rate at its announcement. That was a report by my colleague Eben Ejekum Obwating, read by my colleague again, Bismarck Awusa. Away from that, government in the upcoming Treasury bills auction scheduled for September 15, 2023, is looking forward to a notable gross issuance of 3.76 billion CDs. This figure represents a substantial week-on-week -week increase of 44.5% as government seeks to roll over upcoming maturities valued at 3.51 billion CDs. The following three business desk reports has more. Government is strategically seeking to roll over the upcoming maturities as part of efforts aimed at addressing its financial obligations and maintain liquidity in the market. However, amid the amplified target size, concerns have arisen regarding potential investor demand. It is speculated that the market's response may fall short of expectations given the substantial issuance volume. As a result, 
GCB Capital Research suggests that the yield for the 91-day T-bills could potentially escalate to reach the 28% mark. This development underscores the delicate balance that the government must navigate in its debt management strategy, particularly in a market environment marked by varying economic forces and investor sentiment. The forthcoming T-bills auction will be closely monitored as market participants assess the outcome and its implications for the broader financial landscape. That was a three business desk report. In more stories, a recent nationwide survey commissioned by the government has revealed more than 91% of youth in the country are enthusiastic about pursuing careers in agricultural, technical and vocational sectors provided they receive the necessary training and skills. They believe that careers in agriculture and TVET could lead to financial success. This report has more. The report further revealed that 87% of the young participants showed interest in policy discussions related to agriculture, technical and vocational ATVET. The survey was commissioned as part of the Ghana Growth Programme. It was conducted by Denso Associates and collected responses from over 1,100 randomly selected individuals aged 15 to 35 across all 16 regions of Ghana. We looked at the knowledge, attitudes, and perceptions of young people about the agri sector and the knowledge parts of it showed that they had good knowledge about the sector however they had very limited knowledge around the programs and opportunities in the sector they have a very positive attitude towards the sector they are interested in engaging in it perception of the sector is somehow quite low they're still perceived as quite traditional and so there's the need for a lot more to go into clarifying the opportunities there. The Ghana Grows Program, which is a collaborative effort between the MasterCard Foundation, the Springboard Roadshow Foundation and Limehouse, initiated this research to combat negative perceptions about agriculture and ATVET and address youth unemployment in Ghana. Considering recent developments in the sub-region unrest in some of the countries, it is obvious that the demand for food will go up. And so to the extent that we can create jobs, not just in the planting or direct farming, but in the distribution, processing, research, and several other jobs in the value chain, we can create opportunity for the young people. That was a report by my colleague Michael Ogbudu. Now, traders in Accra say they will join their counterparts in Kumasi to close their shops over harassment by customs officers. They are willing to pay taxes, but fear the harassment by GRE tax officers will lead to the collapse of their businesses. They are talking about ease of doing business, time of doing business, and cost of doing business. And all these things have been impeded and hindered by the actions of uh, the customs or the GRE uh, in the Ashanti region. Already, that region is suffering from lack of businesses. And this thing is going to even aggravate their problems. State organizations and all that, that have their branches there in the Ashanti region, they pay their revenue or they pay their taxes in Accra. And so it's captured in Accra. So if you say, that um, a central region is still paying more is not based on scientific reasons. That was President of Guta, Dr. Joseph Obing. Still on Guta, some traders have been sharing their thoughts with three business. We are, we are ready. The, anytime the uh, commerce people show the red flag, you also support. Nobody will waste them, waste the time. Electric cars, uh, Bosoka, or Kanshi people, oh, we are all ready. What is happening is just GRE frustrating traders. It's like you open your shop and then they send their, their people to your shop to sit with you and then they said we are not writing the right VAT invoices. Where I think it's not our fault because we pay VAT as people buy, we issue VAT. So if you, as you are here, do you see anybody here? No. So how can I issue VAT invoice? In most cases, they just bump on you and then they try to maybe go through your books without any prior notice. I mean, we think it's very, very bad. Sometimes when we, we speak with the government, we sit with them, we, they don't want to listen to us. Okay. And as traders, we should form a united front to fight some of these things. 
some members of Guta sharing their frustrations on what they describe as harassment by GRE tax offices. Meanwhile, the Ghana Revenue Authority says it will ensure members of Guta honor their tax obligations despite their decisions to close down their shops. Assistant Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Dominic Knapp, was reacting to the concerns raised by the Ghana Union of Traders, Guta. Those who are complying, are they closing? There are some who are operating. They don't even know where GRE office is. They don't pay taxes. This obviously will run out of fear. Otherwise, I don't see why, if you are complying, you should run out of fear. Are you likely to engage them going forward? Oh, certainly, certainly. I mean, we need to bring everybody on board. We need to let them know that we are partners in national development. We are not out to harass them. We are out to ensure that together we are able to build this country. I wouldn't say so unless you give us cause to, to suspect. If you are running away, then you must be running away out of something. Are you getting it? So for us, no. We come with an open mind to engage you to find out your level of compliance. If you are complying, we don't have a problem with you. Assistant Commissioner of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Dominic Nab, there. Now take a listen to how some of our key commodities are faring on the global market and how the city is faring against major trading currencies. On the interbank foreign exchange market, where banks trade amongst themselves, the dollar recorded new price change and it's selling at 11 cities 6 pesos. The British pound gained 3 pesos, selling at 13 cities 83 pesos. The euro also gained 3 pesos and it's selling at 11 cities 89 pesos. However, be guided that these figures will be higher at a forex period near you. On the global commodities market, price of cocoa is up by 2.1%, selling at $3,726 per ton. Price of Brent crude oil is down by 0.33%, selling now at about $92 per barrel, while the price of an ounce of gold is down by 0.19%, selling at about $1,910. That was a trip to the Forex and Commodities Markets. That will be all for Business News on Sunrise. For more business stories, please check our website, 3news.com. My name is Menu Afo. Stay with us. We have more news from the world of sports coming up shortly.